Wow, 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 wow. I cannot believe I'm at a TEDx event. This is the coolest thing in the world. It's cool for two reasons. One, I'm really excited about being here. The second thing is that I'm stoked. And I'm stoked because I'm around people like you. People who took their Saturday and wanted to get better. And I don't know about you, but that's what makes everything beautiful. It what inspires me. It's what makes me fill with joy. And quite honestly, it helps me get ideas. Now, I'm just telling you who I am. I'm telling you how I roll. So when people asked me to do the TEDx event, I was thinking to myself, I'm really excited about this. And I remember when Jeremy asked me, I felt like Homer Simpson, right? I did. When he said it, I was like, ooh, TEDx. <laughs> but then when he told me the topic about entrepreneurs and being successful, I really felt like Homer Simpson. And I went, no! <laughs> because the reality is, I'm not a classical entrepreneur. That's not what I do. I can't even spell entrepreneur. <laughs> I, I think it's French, right? And I'm studying Chinese right now. Entrepreneur, voulez-vous, frère Jacques. That's all the French I have. Right? And I almost turned him down. But then I thought to myself, poof, I got an epiphany. And I thought to myself, I could be your bridge. Let's talk a little bit about that a little later. So what you should know about me is I grew up in Newark, New Jersey. Now, before you say I'm sorry, <laughs> why is it that when I tell people I come from Newark, New Jersey, they always say, I'm sorry? <laughs> Newark was a great place. I grew up in a two-family building my parents owned, and my parents were great. And they told and taught my sister and I three things that I want to share with you guys right now. The first thing that my parents said was, look at your hands. Look at your hands. They said, you don't have to wait for anybody. That these two hands can do anything you want if you want it bad enough. Self-reliance. Second thing my parents said was, that the success in your life will be highly correlated with the people you hang out with. You hang out with good people, and you will be successful. You hang out with bad people, and you will fail. And the third thing that they said was, I don't care what you do. You can sweep the streets. You can dig a ditch. You can do anything you want to do. All we're asking is you be the best you can be, the best you can be. That's all we could ask of you. That's all you could ask of yourself. So now, why am I telling you that? I told you I wasn't a classic entrepreneur, but I've been in corporate America all my life. And I've been very fortunate enough to then take some of those ideas, and I've been able to go to people in corporate America and I've been able to craft entrepreneurial type jobs. Jobs that didn't exist. You put together a proposal, you get people excited, and it's amazing what happens. And then when you execute the first time, they want you to do it again. It's like that shampoo commercial, you tell two friends, and they tell two friends, and so on, and so on, and so on. It's amazing what happens. So look. I'm not going to bore you with my story, because this is not about me. This is about all of you. So what I really want to tell you is what do I believe is the secret to get those ideas so you can be successful. And the idea is really simple. The idea is constant inspiration. Constant inspiration. I am your bridge, constant inspiration. So what inspires me? A lot of books, a lot of magazines, 
a lot of people, hanging out with folks like you. But you know what really inspires me? Movies. Now, how many of you have seen Forrest Gump by show of hands? Oh, a lot of people. I love that movie. It was a movie where you had an individual who was challenged, but that individual didn't care, and he was successful regardless, because he had a mother who talked in his ear, and he wanted to be successful. How many of you have seen the movie The King's Speech? King's Speech is a great movie. For those of you who didn't see it, it's about somebody who overcame their stuttering. And if you saw the last scene of that movie, when the king gave his speech, if that wasn't inspirational, then you're dead. <laughs> but my favorite movie is a movie, and how many people saw it, called Shawshank Redemption. If you haven't, go rent it. I love that movie. That was a movie about an individual who was arrested for murder. He was a banker, and he, he, he said he was innocent, but he had to go to jail. Now, the beautiful thing about that movie was he did not let his circumstances dictate what he was. He became more than his environment. He created ideas. He helped inmates, and they became better than, than they were. It was inspiring. Now, do you remember the scene when he was finally breaking out of jail and he had to crawl through that sewer pipeline? And it was like three football fields and you could smell the stench and you saw him through up and he was climbing through and he eventually got there. And then all of a sudden, he saw the light at the end of the tunnel and he pulled off those stinky clothes and he fell down to the ground and he put his hands up in the air. And I thought he was succeeding, he was successful. When I'm down, I think about that scene. Because if I can get inspiration and if I can go crawl through the muck in the mire to get to the end post, then I will succeed. Let me tell you the story of what's inspiring me today. And it's called the story of Zach. Now, Zach is my barber. And Zach is an artist with the Clippers. He's like Michelangelo. He's like Leonardo da Vinci. He is really good. But to make something like this, look halfway decent, he has to be a magician. And I call him Houdin. So the thing that I think that you should be thinking about the most is that Zach, he's been only in this country for eight years. He came from the Dominican Republic. He can barely speak, Span uh, speak, speak English, so he speaks, he speaks Spanish. Now, you wouldn't mistake what Zach is doing for the king's English, but he can communicate with the best of them. And that's beautiful. So, Zach came to this country, to Maryland. He was a barber for about four years, and then he came to Norwalk. In Norwalk, he worked with a barber who wasn't really successful. They started talking, and then all of a sudden, the business started to flow in, because Zach helped her out, and people started to come to the shop. But then, everybody started gravitating towards Zach. And the owner got a little upset, and there was drama. So Zach decided to leave, and he went to a barbershop called Georgie Barbershop. And that's where I met Zach. Now, I came to Norwalk about two years ago from the Hartford area. I had a great barber up in Hartford. But I wasn't driving every weekend in the Hartford to go get a haircut. So I remember I was driving around town trying to find a barbershop. You don't know where to go. So I saw a policeman, and I pulled up to him, and I said, excuse me, sir, as you can see, I need a haircut. 
And oh, by the way, do you know of a, a place where I can go? And he said, he laughed, and he said, go to Georgie's Barbershop. Bunch of Spanish guys, they cut African-American hair, they'll do a great job for you. So I go to Georgie's Barbershop, and I go see Georgie. Now, the barbershop is what you can think of. It's loud, there's music playing, there's a television that's big, there's like seven barbershop chairs, there's cursing a little bit. It's what I'm used to. So Georgie looks me up and down and says, go see Zach. I wait for Zach. I get in his chair. Zach says, excuse me, sir, what's your name? I said, Steve. He said, Mr. Steve, what do you want? I tell him. 15 minutes later, I look in the mirror, and I'm like, I'm human again. He's really good. Zach and I develop a great relationship over time. I remember the next time I went to his shop, it was really loud and raucous. And he said, Mr. Steve, I'm sorry for the noise. And I said, Zach, don't worry about it. He said, no, no, no. If I have my own shop, I do things a little differently. I said, don't worry about it. He said, no, no, no. This is your home when you come here. I want you to be comfortable. I learned a lot about Zach at that moment. Next time I come to his shop, he says, Mr. Steve, I think I want to open up my own shop. Do you think I can do that? And I say to him, you know, it's going to take some money. He has a couple of dollars. He thinks he can do it. I say, you know, Zach, if you believe that you can do it, you can get it done. He said, really, Mr. Steve? And I said, yes. He finally opens up his shop. And I remember opening day. He was all smiles. And he said, Mr. Steve, I'm happy to have you as my customer. Thank you so much. Now, there wasn't a lot of people in the shop. But he progressively built it up. And then all of a sudden, there was another chair and another barber. And then there was another chair and another barber. And then there was another chair and another barber. And before you know it, there were six barbershop chairs and six people who was his employees. Guy had been here for eight years. Eight years. He could barely speak the king's English. And he had his own shop employing six people in his shop. No noise. He had signs up, watch your language. He wanted women to come in with their children. He wanted to do it his way. And then I remember he said, a couple of months later, Mr. Steve, guess what? Guess what? The individual who basically started me up in Norwalk wants me to buy her shop. I said, Zach, do you have enough money to buy her shop? He said, absolutely. It'll be tough, but I think I can do it. So he negotiates the terms, and he buys her shop, the woman who basically gave him the grief up front, and he does it. So Zach today owns two barbershops, two. He employs 11 people. He's an immigrant and he's living the American dream. Now I, I don't know about you, I get inspiration from Zach. Every time I go into his store, every time I go into his shop, I think to myself, how could you have made this happen? How could you have done this? He said, Mr. Steve, the reason why I did this is because I believe I could. And then you know what he said? You know what he said? He said, Mr. Steve, the other reason why I could do this is because it's people like you who believed in me that I could do it. I get choked up even thinking about it right now. I didn't do anything. 
I basically just gave him a little something so he could go along the way. That's all I did. So, the reality of the situation is this. If Zach can do what he did, what can I do? If I'm looking for inspiration, if I'm looking to feed my soul, if I'm looking to come up with ideas, what can I do? And ladies and gentlemen, if Zach can do what he did, what can you do? What can you do? So here's what I want everybody to do. I want you to put up your hands like this. Everybody in the room, put up your hands like this. Turn them over. Look at your hands. Put them down in front of you like this. Here's what I want you to know. That it doesn't matter if anybody helps you out. Those two hands in front of you can do anything they want to do if you really believe it strong enough. Look around the room. Look around the room at the people around the room. Look at them. Fraternize with these people. These are the people that you need to associate with because these are the people that are positive and can, and can do a lot of positive things to make you succeed. And last thing but not least, I may not know who you are. I may not know what you do. I may not know where you're going to go, but I can tell you one thing. If you believe it and if you think that you can do it, you will succeed. It is really that simple. So if I can leave you with this one thing, I want you to think about this. I want you to find your inspiration. I want you to feed your soul. And I want you to come up with your ideas. You are better than you think you are. Believe it.